Uh, this is Ray at Whitney Auto in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and this is the 2004 Mazda RX-8 that we got started in the last video. Um, if you recall, it was flooded. Um, we did have, uh, it did run poorly after we did get it started, but it did run. Um, and there's a lot of things that can cause RX-8s to flood. Um, bad ignition systems or bad ignition coils are one of them. So seeing as they're a common point of failure on this car, I wanted to go ahead and check the ignition coils. Um, the white spot or heat spot technique you may have uh, read about online for looking for spots underneath the ignition coils. It, it just doesn't hold water. Um, it's a, it's a wildly inaccurate and it, it just doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you three different methods by which to test them as long with, along with the procedure of which to get them out of the car so you can do bench testing. Um, all that is right here in this video on how to check and remove uh, Mazda RX-8 ignition coils. Now this may be the least accurate way to test the ignition coil, but it will tell you quickly uh, if you're dead in the water or not. All you're going to do is put in your old school timing light. Um, you're going to put it on power and ground on the battery and on a, a leading spark plug wire. If you're trying to diagnose a no start condition, the trailing spark plugs will not always fire um, when the car is cranking. So use a lower one unless the car is running. Then you can put it on the on the trailing one and see if you um, see if you have fire see if you have a, a spark there. Now all you're gonna do is put it on and it is lighting up. It is telling me the spark is probably hard to see in the picture, but uh, I do have electricity flowing through that spark plug wire, so I am getting some spark out of your ignition coil. How much? This way won't tell you. That's what's next. Now that we have confirmed that there is some electricity flowing through the spark plug wire, meaning the ignition coil is doing something, um, we are going to remove, t turn the car off, of course, and remove uh, a spark plug wire and use an old-fashioned spark tester. Now these are all different and some are adjustable, some aren't, uh, so I don't want to give you uh, an exact number to look for or anything. Bright blue spark is good. If you have a difference from one spark plug to another, that might not be good. Uh, also, the trailing plugs during uh, cranking may not always fire, so uh, you don't want to solely rely on that and you'd want to move on to the bench, pass, bench test for the ignition coil. Uh, give me a moment and I'll get this plugged in and we'll see what it looks like. Now, as you can see, there's a bright blue spark coming from the spark tester on this uh, car, letting you know that ignition coil is working. Not only that, it's working well. Um, if you have a weak spark, erratic spark, or a uh, a red spark, you know, or no spark, your ignition coil may be faulty. The next thing you'd want to do is take it off the car and do the bench test that I'm about to show you. Now in order to bench test the ignition coils, you're going to have to remove them from the vehicle um, or at least gain access to the connector port on them and then if you're going to go that far you might as well take them out because it will make it a lot easier. So now we're going to go over a real quick removal procedure so you can gain access to the ignition coils and bench test them. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is remove the four 12 millimeter nuts from the strut tower brace. And remove the strut tower brace. The next thing we're going to do is get your air box out of the way. In order to do that, you're going to have to remove the 10 millimeter or loosen the 10 millimeter clamp on the throttle body. Disconnect the connector on your solenoid here, your mass airflow sensor and remove the two clips that retain them in. This car has been around the block a couple times, both clips are already loose. We're just going to pull that harness out of the way. But the next thing you need to do is remove the three vacuum lines or vent lines that are on the air boot. Um, Wherever is easiest is the best place to do them. I find twisting and popping is the best way to do it. Twist, pop, twist, Up. Now, over here on this chamber here, there's a vacuum line with an elbow. You want to disconnect that if the car's been running. It will have vacuum on it, so it will be a little bit hard to get off. And then on this solenoid, the top hose on it, that needs to come off as well. After that, you're going to pull your air boot forward. Up. And out of the car. Now that we have access to our ignition coils, you can remove them if need be for replacement or for bench testing. Uh, 
They're pretty simple. If you've never done it before, you may want to mark your ignition wires with a with a marker or tape so that they're easy to reinstall. Um, it's just one connector and a 10 millimeter nut. Now this 10 millimeter nut and this bracket is kind of weak, so be careful for uh, rusting or snapping the stud off. Uh, you may want to spray it with some kind of PB blaster or WD-40 beforehand. So we have our connector off. And we're out. With our ignition coils out of the car, we can do the bench test procedure. Um, this is probably the most accurate way to test an ignition coil. However, the uh, specifications in the workshop manual aren't uh, exact for many, many different reasons. So what I've done is I've obtained a known bad ignition coil and a known good ignition coil. It's used, but it is known good um, so that we can check and compare the two. So if you're checking your own, you have a better understanding as to what numbers you're really looking for. Um, we're going to use a standard DVOM uh, on resistance and the positive and negative leads do matter where you put them uh, uh, when you're checking an ignition coil. The other thing we're looking at here is that if you're looking into the ignition coil from left to right the pins are labeled C, B being the center one, and A on the right. Now the first check according to the workshop manual we're going to do is be do between pins A and B. A getting the positive lead and B getting the negative lead. Uh, according to the workshop manual we want any amount of resistance. We do not want infinite resistance and we do not want zero, meaning there was a short. So let's check our good lead for our good coil first and see what we had. Again, B pin in the middle getting the negative lead and A pin on the right getting the positive lead. And that is 1.567 kilo ohms. Now let's check our bed once it compare. Again, black on the center, red on the on the right. And we have 0 0.9, 0 0.97 kilo ohms. So we do see a difference there. Okay. The next check we're going to do will have a similar expectation from the workshop service manual, uh, where infinity or zero again is not normal. You do want some kind of resistance um, between B and C whereas B will get the positive lead now and C will get the negative lead. So on, again on our good ignition coil let's see we have the red lead going on the center pin and the black lead going on the left pin and we have 2.1 2 point, 2 point mega ohms. Again look at that letter at the end that's M for mega. Let's do that now on our known bad ignition coil. Two point five mega ohms. So again, we see a, a difference there. The last check we're going to have is between pin C and A, the two most outer pins. C, the pin on the left, is going to get the positive lead, and A, the pin on the right, is going to get the negative lead. According to the workshop manual on this, we want um, a large amount of resistance. So we want something beyond kilo ohms. So let's check on our good one. Again, A gets the a gets the negative lead and A is on the right. Sorry, got tangled here. And C is getting the positive lead. And we have OL meaning no continuity, so that would be good. Okay. Now let's check our bad one. This one is also OL. So that, te that portion of the test is the same on both, but given the differences in readings in the first two uh, pin test procedures, we'll let you know that whether or not your coil is either good or bad comparing to both this known good and known bad coil. Now it may have been difficult to follow this video and find that I did find two bad ignition coils on this Mazda RX-8. Uh, I replaced them with known good ignition coils and the car drives great. Um, as you recall from the first video, uh, we bought this car assuming that it needed an engine because the prior owner told us that um, all we knew is that it wouldn't start. Uh, right now I have a pretty decent running engine. Uh, coming up in future videos, I will be cleaning the secondary shutter valve, 
Um, also, uh, doing a compression test to check the overall health of the engine using a Mazda compression tester and checking all three chambers um, in metric form. Uh, so subscribe to the channel. If you can, um, visit the webpage, like us on Facebook. I appreciate all the input. Um, comments and likes are good. And uh, we'll have future videos coming up here shortly. So again, please subscribe. Thanks.